anyway, I don't mean to just go on and on. I, I was about to yeah. talk about how being an independent publisher of role playing structurally and socially had a dream window. Mm-hmm. And then, and I can tell you why the window opened and I can tell you why the window closed. But right okay, now, that's interesting. okay. So in the world of the 90s, um, mm-hmm. where, you know, it's, and, and I, I'm biting my tongue to make sarcastic comments about how freedom <laughs> and the free market and, you know, real democracy and everything would flood through places like Poland, right? All, yes. that, all, that, rhetoric, all that rhetoric, right, is mm-hmm. in the air. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, at that point, uh, the, the, the business of role-playing as a publishing venture had effectively completely failed out. Dungeons of TSR was bankrupt in the middle of the nineties in debt for $37 million, which at the time was actually real money. And then, um, the the ownership of all sorts of various different things like different conventions the the system of bringing games into game stores the game stores themselves all of these were failing out horribly uh, mm-hmm. they had been on life support with magic for a little while but now magic you can buy anywhere so why bother with the game store um, mm-hmm. and so the and, and um uh, role playing was being stolen its content was being stolen for comics and movies all the time without any attribution at all um Mm -hmm. and so as usual we were providing all the content for other media like we've done for all Mm -hmm. digital meeting media from the beginning all Mm -hmm. electronic and digital gaming has looted from tabletop role-playing the whole time and yeah D &D is like exactly it's, it's, it's written on on so many games of course and so the uh, and then of course you shift the big genre of role playing and all of a sudden it becomes the big genre of digital gaming first anime then vampires right I mean it's very straightforward so yeah. the uh, so therefore in this context people were trying to get role playing basically their venture capitalists were pouring money into role playing games in order to establish intellectual property and then turning around and trying to pitch television shows. But the television mm-hmm. people would look at the role-playing games and say, hey, good idea. Oh, intellectual property? Screw you. We'll just do it our way. So instead of Deadlands, the TV show, we get Wild Wild West, the movie, right? Or Deadlands, the movie, we get Wild West instead. Of, you see yeah. what I mean? I could go on and on and on and on. White mm-hmm. Wolf fought back against this regarding Underworld, and they won. And they got a settlement from the movie company. Because the judge took oh, one wow. look at Underworld, read one vampire book and one werewolf book, and said, "Oh, for God's sake, you stole their stuff. Give them the money, right?" And so, oh, interesting. Yeah, and so, but that's a rare example. Um, mm-hmm. And I will point out that White Wolf itself, its first round of publishing in the early '90s, with its first four games, then followed up with Changeling and a couple of others, Trinity and Trinity stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, had completely failed out. And while it did not file for bankruptcy, it almost did. And they had to eject the current owner, pull of of office coup, right, to Mm -hmm. take over the company and completely reboot its economics. So don't think of Vampire as the new hot successful game. It's just a failed bankruptcy on top of another company's failed bankruptcy. So, I mean, you're looking at a complete disaster. Role-playing business is trash. Great games are coming out. They get one printing. They don't make enough money per unit. The stores don't reorder them. They're done. This happens all the time. It has nothing to do with market forces of what people want or don't want. Games, it's just like comics. You go into the store and you would say, I would like a copy of this. And they say, oh, we had that, but it's sold out. And I would say, I would like a copy. Would you please order it? And they would say, oh, we don't order that. It doesn't sell. Yeah. Right. This is classic. Right. It's it's just not part of the structure by which they make the bulk payment, the bulk purchases that they want to move and Mm -hmm. role playing. So role playing was a disaster is what I'm trying to say. This situation could not persist. And by the early 2000s, by about it was obvious to anyone in the late 2000s, late 1900. I'm not saying the right numbers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just before 2000, in the late 1990s, it was obvious to anyone 
by a couple of years later, it was destroyed. Mm -hmm. So, and the more so because um, Wizards of the Coast had bought a retail chain to mm -hmm. pump out their, their D20 stuff, but they already knew they were selling to Hasbro. So they sell to Hasbro and then they sell the retail chain because Hasbro doesn't need a retail chain. So mm -hmm. you see what I mean? It was very strategic and very structural. They knew exactly what they were doing. In the middle mm -hmm. of all this, the idea that you would say, I'm going to publish my role-playing game and I'm going to, and people are going to like it and play it, and they will go to the store and they will want to order more copies because they like it and play it, then the retailers will say, Hooray, people love this game. I think I'll buy some more of this game so they can purchase it. We will have a great time. And mm -hmm. then the game will become suddenly profitable in one year. Because it has to be a year in the States, unsold books are assets and will be taxed. So that mm -hmm. means that, and this is before digital printing. So you have to get 5,000 books, which means you have to mulch 4,500 of them at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Right. So you see what I'm getting at. It's a, it's a complete, it's, it's a fool's game. It's a complete fool's game. There's no reason. Yeah. And so um, <clears throat> the window that opened, of course, was mm -hmm. as, I mean, it's the internet. And that's very easy to understand. This And the window opens before PayPal, before Google, before all the things that we think of as the platforms, right? The ordinary platforms. Mm -hmm. Before Amazon was more than just like one warehouse, right? Just mm -hmm. in, in the beginning when the, the IMDB was a search engine, basically. Mm -hmm. So at this point, um, you could put out your role-playing game and mm -hmm. there was no infrastructure to dominate. Nobody could dominate distribution. Mm -hmm. Nobody could dom Nobody could become the, the center of how you get yeah. role-playing games, where you go to find out about them and how you get them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> nobody could do that. And that was the dream time for publishing your own role-playing game. When digital print finally became I mean, shit, when I started Sorcerer in 1996, we didn't even know about PDFs. They were sitting in the printers the whole time, but we didn't know about them. So, uh, every, you know, five years later, 2001, 2003, everything's changed. I can now have somebody hit a button on my website. It will be printed at that printer several states away and shipped to them. Mm -hmm. And that's all I need to do. And it's still independent publishing. It's just me and the customer and my print bill. That's all. So it's really easy. But that changed due to two effects that I think you're very, very familiar with. The change began around 20, 2010, 2009, mm -hmm. 2010 began. I say 2012 is the, the tipping point. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about drive through RPG and we are talking about Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, both of which on their first page, on their introductory paragraph, seem like heaven. Mm -hmm. Their introductory paragraph is wonderful. The basic idea, fantastic. If we did that, it would be fantastic. Oh, this is how we're really doing it. And mm -hmm. with Kickstarter, I don't think it's really their fault not the creators of Kickstarter. It's not their fault. They were thinking very much as devices, inventions. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that you would pledge to help somebody make the invention, and then you would get maybe something, I don't know, a prototype or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Or But you didn't expect them to finish the invention at the end of the campaign. Whereas, mm -hmm. as you can see, turning this into publishing, all of a sudden what you're doing is just ordering the game. You're pre-ordering the game. That's all. Yeah. And once you're in that situation, we now are back to deadlines. We are back to production value and about hysterical, exhausted excitement that you mm -hmm. can whip up. Um, what they, what they call the, uh, the greater fool theory in economics right? Something has value based on how much someone else is going to pay for it later. 
Um, yeah, right, like right? the some of the board games are considered. I'm not sure if if there's an English term for it, but some of the board games which will not be reprinted, like the first edition of Descent, right. are right. now are now like you know much much sought of and very pricey because there is no more of it. Right, so, right, yeah. certainly. Yeah, right. you are creating scarcity of certain things. That's one yes. device. Another one, which is very common and in fact I think is practically standard for digital games is to what they they did it before kickstarter too with their playtesters is basically to release the crappy not finished version and call that first edition and just let the consumer base pay for their services to play test your final version so yeah. all of this is fully in place in the case of role playing games what we get are games that are simply published in pretty form before they are anywhere near finished as role-playing games. And they are capturing people subculturally, because if you're this kind of gamer, then you need to have this game. By owning this mm -hmm. game, then you are this kind of gamer. You have bought your identity in the group. And... Um, if you try to play it, then you have to convince yourself that, oh, it works. Oh, it's good. And now you're lying mm -hmm. to yourself. When you lie to yourself, you tend to become very hostile, defensive, protective, you know. And so I think that there are plenty of games out there that are based on people lying to themselves about their experiences with it. Um, the pattern that you see in the discussions is very simple. They are very excited when they start to play then they're confused and then they're making excuses for the game and then they can find <laughs> then they find reasons not to play it and you can just watch it i mean i watched this with the 90s games it happened with all of the white wolf games it happened with all of the it happened with the d20 surge in dnd everybody was mm -hmm. so excited and then they got kind of exhausted and bored and just stopped being enthusiastic but didn't say anything they never said this isn't a very good design. So, so the, anyway, the window, is, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Our conversation is so. I would like to dive more deeply into your thoughts about why Kickstarter and why drive through are bad. But let's park maybe this because yeah, uh -huh. I think I asked the question and then we move on into something which is very interesting to me because I'm interested about it, but it doesn't it influences me. And I can and I don't publish stuff. I just buy right, stuff. Right, right. So anyway, so, so good. But that gives you a little bit of context for how people yeah, talk definitely. about role playing. Let's go back to what you were talking about with the the PBTA. First of all, which of the games are you enjoying playing? Which just we'll we'll go really, with your enjoyment of it. Yeah, I really enjoy uh, the original Apocalypse World. I really enjoy Dungeon World. I really enjoy Urban Shadows. Uh, I recently played, for example, Legacy, and it was, it was, I did enjoy it, but it was different. It was like hard work to make it work. Mm -hmm. For example, with the Legacy, uh, I completely don't like action movie world. I think right. it's unfinished. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's 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 badly designed. I'm not sure if it's true. That's what I think mm -hmm. because the experiences of playing it were not great. We played it, but it was like eh, maybe we can change it. I had a little um, trouble with with Zombie World. I had a hard time playing that. Um, and I only GM'd it once, though I I don't have fully fledged opinion about it. Mm 